I'm Sarah and this is Sarah and we're coming to you from the American Revolution Museum in Yorktown here at our Revolution Era farm and the building that we're standing in is our kitchen so that's what we're going to be doing today what everybody does in their kitchen which is cooking uh, and the recipe that we're going to be doing today is a chicken fricassee The chicken fricassee recipe that we're going to be doing today is one from Martha Washington's Book of Cookery. And the interesting thing about Martha Washington's Book of Cookery is that it was passed down through several generations of her family, many of the recipes coming from the Elizabethan and Jacobean eras. Martha Washington received the Book of Cookery uh, in 1749 when she married Mr. Custis and she continued the tradition of passing the book on in her family by giving it to her granddaughter Eleanor Park Custis when she got married in 1799. So the chicken fricassee that we're going to be doing is probably a little bit different, a little bit older fashioned than a lot of its 18th century counterparts. It's going to have slightly different ingredients and we'll talk about that as we go into the recipe. So to make a fricassee, take two chicken or a hare Kill and slaw them hot. Take out their entrails and wipe them within. Cut them in pieces and break their bones with a pestle. Then put half a pound of butter into the frying pan and fry it till it be brown. Then put in the chicken and give it a wham or two. Then put in half a pint of fair water, well seasoned with pepper and salt. And a little after put in a handful of parsley and thyme and an onion shred all small. Fry all these together till they be enough, and when it is ready to be dished up, put into the pan the yolks of five or six eggs well beaten and mixed with a little wine vinegar or juice of lemons. Stir these well together, least it curdle, then dish it up without any more frying. So the origin for the term fricassee comes from the old French words that mean to fry and to break. Uh, so that is where this comes from. There is a little bit of a difference from our terminology today as far as frying. We think of dredging in flour or cornmeal or a combination and then frying it. In this time period to fry is more like to pan fry or saute and just brown it off on the outside. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different than our modern day fried chicken. And as far as the sauce, when we think of making gravies and sauces to go on meats, a lot of time today, and even in the 18th century, they would have been flour based. You would have started with flour as a thickening agent with some sort of fat. Uh, but this recipe predates that a little bit, and it's gonna be a very silky sauce with the egg yolks and the seasonings. It's gonna be kind of the texture of a hollandaise sauce. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting up the chicken as the recipe calls. Um, you're gonna just quarter the pieces apart, and then once we have this all cut, we're gonna start to brown it in the butter. When she is looking for her places to cut the chicken into parts, you want to feel around for the joint. When you feel the joint for the thigh connecting to the body, that's one of the places where you want to make your cut. When you feel the joint between the thigh and the leg, that's another place to make a cut. Same thing for the wing. And so um, one of the other things that we're going to do when we get all the pieces separated, we're going to trim some of the skin and pieces off. Uh, but we want to leave a little bit of the skin on there because it's going to add a lot to the flavor of what we're making. Is that what that's supposed to do? Yeah, give it a wham or two as Mark tells us. <laughs> There's a part in the recipe where it tells us to 
put the chicken in a mortar and pestle. And my personal theory on that is the purpose of breaking the bones of the meat would be to release some of the marrow and add a little bit of flavor to the cooking. Well, now that we have our chicken cut up and ready to go, our next step is to add butter to our hot pan. And then we're gonna to start to lightly fry, but we don't wanna to fry to the point of browning, browning like we do today in our modern fried chicken. So we're gonna take some butter over to our frying pan. So in the 18th century, this frying pan would have been called a spider skillet because it's got little legs and you put coals underneath to cook it. Get the butter melted. And now we'll start adding some of our chicken. Now at this point we'll let it sit and cook some and then we'll flip it over and then repeat the process with the last remaining pieces. We don't want to fry this like a modern chicken. We want to lightly cook it. So now I'm going to do the part where we shred some onions small, and these are onions from our kitchen garden. And you can check out our kitchen garden and some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. One of your options to make it more seasoned for a modern palate would be to add a little bit of chicken bouillon to your water or uh, to just replace the water with fresh chicken stock. That would be a great option. Um, I'm gonna give it a stir and put my half a pint of water to the chicken and butter. Okay. 
So while our chicken is finishing boiling, essentially, is what that water is going to do. It's going to steam it and boil it enough to get the chicken finished cooking all the way through. And while that's happening, I'm going to cut up some of our sweet herbs from the garden. I have flat leaf parsley, Italian parsley that we grow in our garden, and thyme. And those are the two recommended sweet herbs from our recipe. A good rule of thumb for cooking is if you're using dried herbs like dried parsley or dried thyme to not go quite as heavy handed because when herbs are dried, it concentrates the flavor. So since these are freshly picked today, we're going to go ahead and add a plenty. Go ahead and add our onions now that the liquid part is cooking. Smells really good. I'm not even done yet. going to add some of our sweet herbs from the garden. They've been coarsely chopped. Oh man, I wish you could smell this. The fresh herbs and the butter and the chicken and the onions. It smells amazing. Okay, so our last step for our recipe is to separate four yolks from the whites. We want to keep the yolks and leave the whites behind. And after they're finished being separated, we're going to whisk them together with a bit of white wine vinegar. And that's going to help temper the egg yolks because one of the things that we're going to do is when we put it in the skillet, it's right when you take it off the heat. So the residual heat and the vinegar are going to cook these egg yolks enough to be edible, but not to be scrambled. That's what we do not want is, is scrambled egg yolks in our fricassee. That would be uh, not a proper way of doing it for our recipe. So we want a nice silky golden sauce. We don't want chunks. <laughs> so this is one of our whisks set of birch twigs. <laughs> Yeah, get it nice and broke up before you add the vinegar. The last thing we're going to do is remove our chicken fricassee from the hearth so that we can temper the egg yolks in the hot pan. So this is very hot. We've got to be careful. All right. I'm going to pour the stuff in there and I'll mix it in with the sauce. It smells really good. Yeah, it smells amazing. My goodness. This is my breakfast. Alright, let's get some of this in there.
So we're gonna let it kind of cook in the pan for a moment before we plate it up and get our friends in here to try it. So now we're gonna plate up the chicken fricassee. things you'll be able to see is that this sauce has thickened beautifully with just the egg yolks no flour needed and so even though we started off kind of bland <laughs> we've got salt and pepper sweet herbs onions and even a bit of vinegar start plating because we got to test our recipe and make sure you know it smells and looks good but we want to make sure it also tastes just as good and can't forget a little extra sauce Okay, so now that we have our chicken plated, I brought in my friend Bert here and he's gonna help me test out and make sure, you know, it smells good and looks good, but we also need to make sure it tastes good. Dig on in. There is water seasoned with our herbs, salt and pepper, and then the sauce was made using the egg yolks and vinegar. And we slowly added after we took it off the fire. Wonderful job with that. Yeah, real good. Can I get the rest off? You gotta fight me for it. about chicken fricassee. Uh, if you want more content like this, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thanks for watching.